What is up, everybody? It is your boy, Phil Shocker, the Nanny Sid Joe here with our week 10, the final week of APA Low Tier Team Builder. Now, as I'm recording this video, I have not played my week 9 game, so I do not know that we need to win this game to clinch or if we have already clinched. I don't know at this point. If we win our week 9 game, this battle doesn't really matter as much at all. It only would potentially affect seeding at the very worst. And we would very probably maybe potentially be seeding at maybe the around the last two or three spots being six, seven, eight. But if we lose week nine, then we have to win this game. And this game is really hard to really win. It, it really, really is. Like it's just a tough matchup for us here. But if you guys are excited, what could be our last team builder? Maybe, who knows? Hit the like button if you already subscribe if you are new and join the Push Shocker crew today because you'd be really with the king of the crew. And with that, let's break down this matchup. We're going against Leaf and her Quillfishes. I didn't pay attention to her name and I feel sorry for that. Sorry. But she's got a very scary team that's kind of just top heavy with a couple of low tier, with other low tier threats. Obviously, it gets low tier. But she's got Mega Manet Torkoal, which cannot have Drought. Lola Ninetales, which is allowed Hail. Artazold, Escavalier, Surfetch. Galar Articuno, Volubi, Stantler, Quillfish, the mascot pick, and Torterra. I feel like in this matchup, she doesn't bring Torterra or Quillfish at all. Torterra and Quillfish just don't do really anything for her in this type of a match. I don't really think it does too much at all. Um, Stantler has some small capabilities to come in, mostly because of Intimidated. It also could be a Sap Sippermon, because looking at my team, I kind of can use the advantage of using my Sceptile a little bit. Again, a little bit, not a lot. <sighs> Excuse me. But you know what I mean. Then there's... um Volibee. I don't know why I'm blanking so hard on stuff, man. There's Volibee. Volibee is... It could come... It would be her defogger. Because if you look at her team right now, besides Surfetch and Galarian Articuno... Actually, Galarian Articuno, I'm pretty sure doesn't get defog. But Rapid's been on Torkoal, defog on Galarian... Um, so I don't know if she wants to waste a moose slot for that, but she could. Um, but Defog was a big possibility. It's also a really annoying mod for my team. I think Galar Articuno has a very strong chance to potentially show up this game. Psychic Flying is a very hard typing for my team to safely switch into. I don't have the guaranteed switch to him except maybe one mom, but one mom's neutral to flying, so I would play around it. And this thing could be a net, very big problem if it is a spec set, and it could just be pretty much killing everything on my team. Um, for the team, I do see Mega Manette. Mega Manette be just an annoying, stupid mon. I've lost to him. I lost a league match because of this when they clicked Destiny upon when my uh, Galissapod was going to win last season of APA's low tier. If you guys remember on the channel. And that frustrated the hell out of me. But I do see Mega Manette because Mega Manette's actually a really good answer to good things. It's faster than Driftblim and plus it can get set up before Driftblim can do much. It pretty much stops my um, Medicham from doing much. Priority Shadow Sneak. Like, if I look at this team, I see will o -Wisp, Shadow Sneak, Poltergeist. As for last move, I could definitely see even Chirk Room because of Prankster. And then I see Torkoal being brought, even though Torkoal cannot set up Sun, sun because of Droughts being banned. Torkoal is a really good Chirk Room mod because it can really just do a lot versus us. And then I can see her bringing her Hail Core. Her Hail Core is very devastating for us to really switch into. We have very limited answers and definitely has a hard time for us to kind of just plow for her team. Escavalier is a massive threat. Escavalier is so annoying. If we don't see Escavalier, that's going to open up so many doors for my team to be able to win this game. And I do think Surf Edge comes. Surf Edge is a massive fighting type that can just pretty much click any attack it wants. It's going to have the relatively coverage that it needs to face us. And everything, but so it is one of those things. But yeah, but let's go over the team that we're gonna bring for this week, and maybe the last time we bring. But first off, we're kicking off here with Solar with max HP, max special attack, modest nature four in, in defense, Sunday extra sensory, slow plume eruption. Basically, she has no solid fire switch on her team besides Quillfish, and even Quillfish does not want to take an eruption slash lava plume to be roughly two KO'd. Torkoal is our only legit way of sending in. The, to stop the sun, but obviously with Focus Blast, I can 2 AKO that thing, but I don't have Focus Blast. I do have Sunny Day. Now, this is a little bit risky bring on to see a Choice Craft set, just because you can cancel out with Hail. But if I can maybe get rid of Hail, then I can set up Sun. I can have two or three turns with Sun and have Typhlosion in there, just spamming Sun boosted attacks. 
But also what's having good with having sun there is I neutralize that hail and keep that hail from being set up there. But with Eruption Lava Plume, we literally just spam attacks. Extra Sensory is only there for Quillfish to 2 KO at that thing. But if I don't see Quillfish and I, for some reason, don't see Torkoal, I'm just spamming Eruption and Lava Plume. That's all I'm really doing. Um, I could also see myself just spamming Extra Sensory on Torkoal because that could do about 30-ish, 40-ish percent, depending on investment. And depending on if you have on Hail Chip, maybe being able to do something like that. I don't know. But otherwise, I think Solar can put it in here. I think Solar could potentially be a win con. Up next, we have a Renella Wind Con potential and Breaker this week, though. We are running our Drapion here with Knockoff, Poison Fang, Fire Fang, 152 in HP, Max Attack, Adamant, 104 Speed. With the 104 Speed, I am faster than everything on her team, guaranteed, with the Speed Investment, which is very important as well. Because at plus 1, I would not outspeed, so at plus 2, I outspeed everything, which is her fastest thing, being the Nine Ninetales. I did try seeing if I could try to outspeed Choice Scarf um, on Zolt, just for that reason. But I couldn't. So I decided, you know what? Our best bet is going this. We're going to have some HP investments. We can, roughly around full HP, can live a boosted bolt beam hit. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say, like, oh, he's just going to click Icicle Crash. Well, if he clicks Icicle Crash, she, I mean, I meant she. Sorry, I'm sorry, Leaf. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. But if she clicks Icicle Crash, then that's fine because I can live that. I knock her out with a knockoff or a poison jab. Or knock off, get rid of her item, and then she's less threatened. You know, that nice type there, so it keeps them that team. So, definitely something to note right there. But I also I think Drevian can do a lot of work this week. Um, we already in the odd number in HP because that way it gives us like, a better chance of life or recoil damage on us. So, definitely expect Drevian to put in a lot of good work. Up next, we're in Hunter here with Comberry, designed to pretty much stay in against the Archazolt, kill that thing back, or severely chip it. Liquidation, Sticky Whip, Toxic, Reflect. Reflect is there just to set up a Reflect. Water Bolt, what's really good is that this could be potentially my answer to uh, Bennett because Bennett can't touch me. Like, Bennett can hit me with physical attacks, but here's the thing. Bennett can't Will-O-Wisp me, and what's really good is that the first thing that Bennett can do is taunt me. And taunt could be the other move besides um, maybe like Iron Defense or Trick Room, but I think Trick Room's better. But we're already max HP, 36 attack, 120 in defense, 100 in spadef with the Impish Nature. We should, unless it is specs, we should always guarantee live one hit from the Aroma the uh, little nine tails and either kill it or severely cripple it with liquidation sticky webs is there because again if she doesn't bring any form of hazard removal she can't do anything with plus the main thing with having drought gone she cannot hit my araquanid or neutralize my liquidations which is really really good unless i set up the sun myself with my typhlosion so liquidation spamming in this game is so free in this match the only thing is with quillfish but again i don't really kind of care with quillfish with quillfish i can just set up my reflect and everything like that and go from there up next, we're bringing a really kind of risky bring. Uh, not really risky, but I think this is a good bring nonetheless. We're bringing Chain Solar Duran here with Crunch, Iron Head, Ag Home Claws, and Agility. I would have loved to have put a physical move like Superpower for Dur for Escavalier, but Agility, Home Claws, I felt like was a really good bring on our end. Because with the Agility Hustle Boost, we can basically be able to do a lot, a lot of damage. Now, I could run Rock Slide, and I might do some calcs with Rock Slide. But the reason I have Crunch, unless she has got a ton of investment in HP and defense on her Mega Banette, which I don't think she's going to, Crunch guarantee knocks out Banette at the range it'll be at full. With it. And that's the reason I have Lumberry, because I know she's going to start going for it. So hopefully I get my agility up first, or in 1v1 I go for the Crunch, and if it doesn't kill, then what I can do then is I can Iron Head on the following turn, or Crunch again to kill, depending on the investment and stuff like that, and get rid of that stupid... Stupid Bennett. That dumb Bennett. But honestly, Durant here is just hopefully going to be here to break and hopefully chip. Up next, we have Choice Banded, Doug Trio, the Three Stooges here with Memento, Rock Slide, Earthquake, Sucker Punch, 88 HP, Max Attack, and 168 Speed. With the Speed, we are faster and everything on her team. And with Choice Banded hits, unless she does not have a flying type, Earthquake Spam is there to stay. And what's really good is that Bennett has to come in. Bennett just dies to an Earthquake. And if Mega Bennett um, comes into play, Here's the thing, I don't mind being burnt with Doug Trio, because Doug Trio, I feel like in late game, can be used to just Memento Sack, and that's what's going to be really good, too. It's like, if we can get a Memento play on the right type to turn, that could be really huge for us. So, definitely something to note right there, especially if she doesn't bring Scarf Zolt. I think Scarf Zolt is better with Hail, and that's kind of a stupid thing that I have to say, but I think it's the best way for her to really kind of take advantage of the um, Hail and Nespex, and that... And last but not least, we're bringing Shepard, our Mega Ambrose, with Protect, Thunderbolt, Power Gem, and Dragon Pulse. 
Now, it does seem weird that I have the Power Gem on there when I probably don't need Power Gem. But Power Gem's really good, because this way, like, you see how inhale, I can live a hit. I live a hit, and then I can, like, here's the thing. Okay, I'm going to stem my words here. Like, obviously, when I'm now going to click Thunderbolt, in comes Arc Dissolve. Where I could click Dragon Pulse and kill it. Power Gem's a no downside play, it's depending on whichever is in front of me. Just because then I can just chip down to anything I really want and just destroy so much. We are running max HP. We are running more defensive, which may come back to bite us a little bit, but I think it's the better play. With the bold nature, with 144 defense, with 16 special attack, and 96 speed depth. But overall, I definitely think Mega Ampharos can be really good to chip down. We do have protected to stall at hail turns. The main thing we have to look out for is if it's Icy Rock, Light Clay, or Light Clay on Ninetales. Now, I do see her most likely bringing Light Clay, because that really help her more. But what I like about having my um, Solar is I can prevent Light Clay from being a thing and just kill. Or I could just be able to do something else. So definitely puts a lot of pressure on her to do some things on her side and from anything else. But yeah, that's it for the team, guys. If you like Kevin Ready, again, if this is the only chance we have to make playoffs to win and everything like that, and anyways, if we don't even make the playoffs, I'm still happy. We came back, we finished out the season, and we had a great time with low tier. We had some great mons, and just definitely had a lot of things. But thank you all so much for watching. Leave a like if you haven't already. Subscribe if you are new. And until next time, guys, I am Frill Shocker. Then I say, I will see you guys later. Peace.